Hello everybody, welcome back, my name is Captain Aries, and I decided in this trying time of COVID-19 realness of quarantine, I've decided to try my hand at doing another YouTube video, and so here we are. I'm here to talk about Ruby. Yes, sorry, I got a little excited. I binged the whole thing probably about a month ago, and now I'm writing fanfiction for it, so that's not really something new to what I do, <laughs> but I haven't been as, uh, I haven't been as into a show in a while as I have been in Ruby now that I've watched it. Now, let me explain what Ruby is in case anyone doesn't know. Ruby is an anime. I am going off of the fact that it is on Crunchyroll to watch and stream, Verve and otherwise. So I'm just going to take it as it is an anime. Now, Ruby has R-W-B-Y stands for red, white, black, and yellow, aka uh, Ruby, Weiss, Blake, and Yang, the four character main characters' names. Now, I just want to talk about why you should watch Ruby, because if we're in quarantine, some of us, and the others who are, you know, working really hard to keep us all safe and healthy and, in general, keep things moving in wherever country you are in, thank you for doing that. Like, you are putting your lives and your family's lives at risk every day to protect more families and more lives. And I thank you very heavily for that to do. That is a lot to ask of people. So those who of you who are in quarantine, please stay in quarantine. Stay in quarantine, wash your darn hands and doorknobs, and don't touch everything in every aisle that you go into when you go in a grocery store. It would be really nice. So let's talk about Ruby though. I'm back on Ruby. Now, if you need something to watch during this quarantine, I would suggest watching RWBY, Ruby. You wanna know why? I will give you five reasons why. But first, let me tell you why. I watched it. So I tried watching Ruby three separate times. Now the first time I was, it was probably about when it came out in 2013-ish and everyone was hyped about it because of the trailers. Everyone was hyped because we're like, oh shoot, there's 3D animation. <laughs> we were going nuts. I was going nuts. I was like, oh my god, it's so cool looking in the trailers, which they have a trailer for red, white, black, and yellow. They have the respectively the red trailer, black, you know, all that. So if you're ever going to watch those just to see if you maybe might like some of the really good parts of uh, Ruby, definitely check out red, black, or red, white, black, yellow trailers. Because those are hype. And those will show off the four main characters, fight choreography, the way the music interacts with the fights, and it'll even introduce some of the little characters in it a little. Not too much. They're like probably about three minutes, which is trailer-ish size anyway. So, what's really cool about Ruby is the fact that I've tried to watch it three times, as I said. First time I tried to watch it in 2013, I stopped on the first episode because I was really jarred by the 3D. Like, I was like, what's going on? Why is my brain not processing? I'm like, I'm gonna wait to see if it's even good. So I said, I backed off and I was like, okay, Rooster Teeth, do your thing. We'll figure it out if you're good or not. And so I waited and they call them volumes instead of like seasons. So I waited till about volume three because everyone was going nuts again. Everyone was like, Ruby's so good. Why haven't you watched it yet? And I'm like, why haven't I watched it? Oh yeah, I did try that one time. And then I was like, hmm. I should probably try and watch it again because everyone's like, things get real in volume three. At the end of volume three, things get crazy. And I'm like, all right, you've convinced me. I'll try again. I got to about volume two before I was a little bored with this, the setting that they had. And I was just like, eh, maybe this is time. I'm just done with Ruby till I can really handle it. And so, or maybe I'll just be done with Ruby. All depends. What if they were all lying about volume three is what I thought. Then... Then spring break came this recently, and I said, I heard volume seven was hype. And I was about to get in it. Because the one thing that always kept me coming back to Ruby, the reason why I kept watching it more than once, was probably just the music. Cassandra Lee Williams and uh, her father, 
uh, something Williams. Oh God, no! I don't want to mess up his name. Um, uh, Cassandra Lee Williams and uh. Oh my gosh! I forgot his. No, something Williams. I'm trying to remember it. His name escapes me. His name escapes me. Ugh. His name escapes me. What is his name? It's not. It's Cassandra Lee Williams and her dad. Something. Oh God. <laughs> I need to check. Wait. One sec. Uh, I'm gonna look. Cassandra Lee. Cassandra Lee Williams and God. Oh no. Alongside her, yes. Give me his name. Give me his Jeff. Jeff. Why was I? I should have known that. I literally know that. <laughs> so his name is Jeff. So. Oh god, what was I even doing? Okay, so the reason I came back into Ruby all the time was because of Jeff Williams and Cassandra Williams. Uh, so a father-daughter duo. And she was about 13 when she did the first, like, the music for the first one. So she's only grown since then. But she has continuously been a part of Ruby in terms of her singing voice has been used as one of the characters' singing voices. As well as, in general, she sings a lot of the soundtrack with her father, who also I believe he makes most of the soundtrack. Don't quote me on that. But basically they work on it together and usually it's just them when whenever they add someone else in, it's just like they add them in. But they are really kind of the voice of Ruby and the soundtrack system, which is really cool considering like none of the songs are boring. Some of them are a little bit slower, not usually up to my taste as much, but I enjoy the way they interact with the actual show. So now that I've got that down, um, they put out a song called Fear for Volume 7 ending scene. Because whenever there's an ending, usually a bigger ending, they will have a song that reflects what has happened or what is involved in terms of uh, a certain character's viewpoint via the music. Which is, I'll get to why I really love the music in a second other than that. But the song is called Fear. And it's about uh, when you look in the mirror after being in a situation in which fear has changed your choices, will you be able to look at the mirror and look at yourself the same? Or will you regret what you've done because fear has changed your choice and made you be someone else? And I was like, woo! That's some, that's some stuff you don't really think about, whether or not fear changes your choices. But it's true, though. And it shows up in the show, which is why... It was an appropriate ending song. So, I wanted to talk about the five things I like about Ruby. Like, five things that Ruby does well. Because I watched it all the way through. I did it. I did it. I finally watched it all the way through. And it was fantastic. Holy crap. They were always right. Volume 3, things get lit. Things get lit. Volume 3 is when it gets lit. <sighs> Because I was always jarred by the 3D animation. But I'll tell you why in a hot second why I like it now. Sorry, I keep moving the camera. So there are five reasons why I like Ruby now. Five reasons why it got me in. Now, mind you, the first two volumes are a little cringy for multiple reasons of how things are now in the Ruby fandom. But I'm going to tell you about the five things. I keep putting it off. Uh, number one, the best part of Ruby, hands down, in my opinion is the fight choreography. I have watched anime for over 10 years, easy. Probably like 14 years. Like I've been watching all sorts. I consume all sorts of anime, all kinds. I usually am very like variable in my consumption of anime. And I have to say, none of them has choreography quite like Ruby or does it as well as Ruby. With the three, 3D animation type uh, CGI going on, the way that the fight moves is inherently different than a 2D animation, of course. But what makes it even better is the way that it feels like it is choreographed and it's also done in a way that 
makes it very believable in a weird sense. <laughs> Despite the fact that they do all these sorts of weird things, I enjoy the fact that their choreography is based on the fact of they don't just automatically work well together and things like that. A lot of the core principles of the beginning of Ruby even and in the trailers is that they focus on the fact that they have to learn to work together on their teams or they have to have a plan, one or the other. They either work really well with small uh, small choices of words like uh, mission, whatever, or like they use certain code names to signify that they're doing this particular combo or they come up with a plan that helps them do whatever they're about to do. And I appreciate that so much because I don't like it as much when a series doesn't take it from a realistic approach of for fighting, I mean. I think it's appreciative when they actually put in those details that make sense in terms of this feels more realistic or real to me in the way that's portraying itself. <sighs> Sorry. I love the fight choreography. Like a fight, a decent fight in Ruby, like just a decent fight would beat most other anime entirely, completely out of the water, in my opinion. The way that they use their weapons, too, because their weapons are a part of that choreography, is that their weapons are dual weapons. Most weapons in Ruby are two weapons in one. And that sounds cool in concept. It's even cooler when it's used properly in fighting. Like someone who has a gun in their sheath and has a sword that they, like, pull out the sword, but they also can shoot the sword out. And use that as a weapon. Like, that's some surprise crap right there. <laughs> like, you just about to fight someone and they go, Psh! Knock you out cold with the hilt of their sword more than any part of it. That is cool as a concept. Making a hammer come out of whatever. Like, it's so cool the way that they do it. I am always enjoyed that part of the really cool imaginative part of making the weapons for people. And they make their own, apparently, too. And they take things that they like and, like, switch them around. And some people don't have those two-in-one weapons, but some of them are just good enough on their own. But a lot, like, most of the weapons that I've seen in Ruby has a dual purpose. Or is a dual weapon in one. Which I think is fantastic. <laughs> If you're gonna do it, do it, you know? You're gonna make your whole weapon. You can do whatever you want. I'm pretty sure most people would do double of whatever. Few people would probably do one. If you had a choice to do two and you felt like you could do two, go for it. <laughs> yes. So, that's the one reason. If you want really good fight choreography, like nothing you've ever seen before, watch Ruby. That's it. You don't even need the rest of these reasons. Go watch Ruby if you like fight choreography. <laughs> Even from the first part where the animation's a little iffy still, when they sense they had a small team, rip Monty Ohm, the creator. Good boy, good boy. Um, point is, is that if you like fight choreography, this whole thing is centered around really good fight choreography. It really is. That's the whole foundation of what, why Ruby brought people in, too, other than the animation being new was that the fight choreography continuously gets better and continuously aims to be even more achievable. Two, two, the second reason is that I love the music. I've already said this before at this point, but the music is bomb. It's amazing. The music is the reason I keep getting back into it because the music is very special to each person that it's portraying. Like, there's one song about losing somebody, about grief. There's another song about the fact of fear. There's another song about running away and not being able to hide anymore. There's a song about almost everything, but taken in a standpoint that it tells a lot, but it still continuously isn't, like, being a boring storytelling song. It's a song filled with an actual emotion attached. And that... Like, I don't even have to watch Ruby sometimes and I can get some of the gist of what was going on without it. Just because I enjoyed the music so much from Casey Williams and her father, Jeff. Their music is beautiful. It's stunning. It's great. And I'm glad they continuously use that father-daughter duo to establish a kind of like a branding with Ruby. Because they encompass so well 
a lot of the really good elements of Ruby. And I totally, if you like good music, just check out Ruby. Like, at least check out the soundtrack, because that soundtrack is nice. All of them. Every soundtrack. I don't think there's a song I dislike, actually. And there's seven volumes of songs. They keep having more every season. Uh, if that you like music, go for it. There's also character situations. The third one would be character situations. Some of these characters, they deal with a lot of crap. Like, on one point, one season, they all go different directions. They all deal with their own issues. But not in a way that feels, like, forced. It feels like it was a natural thing that they had to do. But some of them are dealing with more mental situations. Of dealing with a mindset that they have been implanted in by someone else or we have some people who have like a physical issue or injury that um requires more than just getting healed or changed so that they can be healed it is the mental process of going through that motions or issues and stuff like that and some of the character situations are a little more like they're less but they're not treated any less severely to the character itself and i'm not saying that they like inflame an issue uh there's issues that are just not treated and they're treated differently but they're not treated any less than any other issue because they mean a lot to the character and that is what's starting me on my fourth one my number four spot for this is that I really love the character-driven plot. Now, I am a I am a lover since I'm a fan fiction writer. I love it when we put a lot of personality in characters and are more character-driven in the plot because there are so many books that are very much story-based in terms of they have a plot, they have a way to get to the plot, and they abuse the fact that this plot is like their main point of selling and so they will sell you on characters, but they're only useful to get to the plot point. I don't like dry characters. And if they are dry, I want the reason for them to be dry to like be shown at some point. Or just, if they're dry, make, make that character just dry as heck. Make it hilarious. Make it, make it more of them balancing out something. But at the same time, don't make them just a plot point, you know? Or a way to get to that. I really like it when characters are just there. Like it's not even like a crucial part of the story. But it's something that you can enjoy as a viewer. Who is enjoying the story with everyone else. And can have fun with. That's what I love. I like how Ruby really much feels like that to me. Perhaps it doesn't feel like that to everybody. But I feel like since we have those character situations that each of them go through. There is a way that they go about it that feels very much like they're not adding like too many characters just for character development in the more recent ones maybe they have. But I have realized that a lot of that is just to not even just establish, but they're still giving them character. And that's important to me is that they're still giving them character despite the fact that they are characters that don't really advance the plot too much. And I appreciate that as a viewer, I can enjoy those characters. I can see their issues or see certain reasons why they are the way they are, despite the fact not being able to know them as long. And I just really enjoy that the way that those types of characters interact with our main characters and do bring out more about them, but don't take away from the fact that those characters exist and aren't just there for that. And that includes, like, the way that each of the characters are able to explore their own identities and things like that. Even if it's totally not, not thought about. Like, the fact that one of the situations is, there are character traits that are brought up that you don't think about till you remember what their backstory was. And you realize that is a, con the way that this person said this is connected to why they reacted this way to this situation. There's a continuous um, character-driven plot in which they do use those backstories in a way that seems fitting for that character. They are very much character-driven. Like, there's one person who grew up in the slums and grew up with less than other people. And when someone suggests giving less to other people to protect people, this person stands up and says, you can't do that to them. They're hurting too. 
and thus that brought up the fact that this character was brought up with nothing and that they understand so severely what other characters are going through and that made it the story feel more visceral it helps with the character it helps it just all comes together and lastly is the one that i struggle with the longest that now has become my top favorite reason why i like the series is uh number five and that would be the driving animation now when it first came out ruby was really popular because of the animation the animation was great it was crazy everybody was going like yes 3d cgi <laughs> going nuts but it's gotten better especially when it hits volume three you can start to see it because i watched the openings before i rewatch ruby again because i also enjoy the opening songs but I watched volume one to volume seven and the amount of change you can see in the actual volume animations, the openings, it's so good. It's so much better than it used to be. And that's not shaming what they had because I know they had a smaller set of crew working on that first one, like an extremely small set at Rooster Teeth. But uh the drive that came out of that and the way that they have changed the animation to make these it's only gotten better the animation has led into each of the other components being more cohesive as it's grown bigger and stronger um like in the beginning uh sometimes you would be distracted by the animation and why it would change so much but around volume three and four it starts working with the choreography because the choreography starts getting better for the fight sequences only because the fact that it's more easily seen and it's so fluid and it looks in a way that feels more visually interesting. And the fact is that the animation even develops even more because now they're doing their fights in places that they you wouldn't think they're gonna fight, but it makes sense. Like, at one point they're fighting in some gravity like changes like one person falling to this wall and then another person falling to the other wall as they're jumping and battling in mid fucking air. Bruh. That shit is lit. <laughs> I'm gonna get demonetized. I didn't even monetize this. I don't even know if I would. I don't know. Sorry, I'm only laid like two YouTube videos. I don't know how this works. But animation has developed in a way that's making the character fights, the choreography scenes, so, so good. It makes them 10 times better because I already enjoy a good fight scene. I'm a fight scene fiend. I enjoy a good fight scene. That animation looked crisp. I'm like, ooh, yes. Whenever there's a finale around, I'm like, I should just watch it for the fight. I shouldn't even like, I, everything else is going to be like, not as good compared to that fight. But Ruby continuously, the animation bumps up because in the beginning, <laughs> I just watched the beginning with some of my friends because I'm trying to get them, I'm, I'm also trying to get my friends into Ruby. And watching <laughs> the first volume was, whew, it was, oof, it was, it was something else to watch the first one. Because the backgrounds were very stagnant and they weren't moving at all. They were like a painted picture, which they could have been for all I know. And then you would have, instead of people walking around as background characters, you would have like six silhouettes meeting a crowd. <laughs> and then they would have occasionally like their rooster, their traditional rooster teeth animation pop up as like a cool like thinking bubble type thing. Which wasn't really fitting for the way that the CG, CGI 3D was going with that. I'm sorry if my like lack of proper terms is annoying anybody. But the way that it's changed though, especially when it hits volume two, obviously they start filling in some of those background characters a little because they stop being just black silhouettes and now they're actual faces, they're actual faces. There's not that many people. But when things start getting really good, you start to see how that changes with their backgrounds, with their uh, uh, vehicles, with anything that's involving that. Newer characters arrive with newer weapons that involve like more animation based uh, things. It's so good. And that is the five reasons. There's probably more reasons you should watch it depending on who you are and what you're looking for. 
Because if you're a fan fiction nut like me who likes to read and write and do all that and build off of the really cool worlds that other creators create, this is a pretty good place to be. I'm not saying like you're gonna find 50 different pairings. No, what I am saying is that you're going to enjoy the characters more than you think and you'll have more to go off of. I love this series now. Like, I'm into it. Like, I want another, where's the next volume? Where's the next one? I'm waiting. I'll wait forever. It's fine. I would wait as long as I need to for the quality of work that they're doing now. I think they're probably going to, like, put one out maybe every year. Who knows? Uh, Rooster Teeth. You're doing a great job, Rooster Teeth. Don't let anyone tell you differently. I know we've all had some ups and downs, and especially with this recent season, which has been great, but we all had some some little mad times with some some stuff but otherwise it's i love the story the way that it's created a very like not super dismal but a very heavy plot in such a small amount of time it creates a heavy plot once you get when volume three hits they were not joking the moment volume three hits everything gets better because they go off in different directions and they learn and they, their personalities grow away from their um, characters. But when they get back, it's just mm, so good. That is what you should uh, watch in quarantine. Um, yeah, I'm Captain Aries and I wanted to say that I don't know how to edit. So if you were at all annoyed by the fact that I went off on a tangent for 20 minutes and don't know why I didn't edit something out, especially... Uh, Cassandra Williams and Jeff Williams, I'm really sorry if I made you mad because I didn't remember Jeff. I didn't remember what his name was. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just cracking up with that. Um, I feel bad. Um, so yeah, Ruby deserves a lot more credit than I ever gave it when I was younger. I... Now that I'm at an age where I can properly watch it and not, like, get super thrown off or distracted by another series, because I've watched so many at this point, I'm kind of up to date. It's really good. If you like an anime that's plot-driven, that has animation that changes and gets better over time, that has really good fight choreography, the best I've ever seen, and the music that just, if you listen on your off time, it's even better. But when it's in the anime, it's still good. And if you want really cool character situations that are realistic in a way that the it feels to viewers, go for it. Go for it. Uh, this is Captain Aries signing off. Quarantine away, my friends. Please stay safe. Please, uh... Try not to go out of your homes. Sanitize those doorknobs. Um, for all of you who are still working to keep uh, any industry alive of any kind, I don't care if you're in America or otherwise, none of us should be having to deal with all this. But since we are, let's stay positive and uh, stay safe. Stay warm or cold, I guess, depending on where you are. Just stay... Um, Stay healthy, guys. And for those of you who are working, despite the fact that uh, COVID-19, I can't say word, or I guess they're acronyms, COVID-19 are running amok, please stay safe, guys. All right, Captain Aries, signing out. Bye.